Herrscher im Thronesglanz, für diese Wolle ganz, Gott sei Dank zu sein, Heil Kaiser dir. Berlin has long been one of the poorest cities in Germany. Its turbulent history dramatically hindered culinary development. The fall of the wall saw a rise in cheap international restaurants being widely spread across the city, and unfortunately, Berlin's own cuisine was neglected. Over the past few years, the city's food landscape has drastically changed for the better. Locals have changed their attitude towards food production and food quality, and a younger, bolder generation has begun to challenge the culinary mainstream as well as embracing their culinary roots. In this Munchies Guide, I'll give you a taste of long-forgotten dishes, the food of the new generation, and introduce you to some lovely people in this unique city that is Berlin. <laughs> I'll start off by getting to know old school Berlin and eating some of the most traditional recipes the city has to offer. First stop is one of the 65,000 garden plots scattered around the city, where I hope to try a raw minced pork sandwich that has been a Berlin staple for the last hundred years. Hi. So from what I understand, people aren't actually allowed to live here. This is basically just a place for people to have a garden who normally live in flats. So we're going to visit Uncle Tom, a Berliner and his garden house. They've got a few traditional German food treats for us. Maybe he's Uncle Tom. Well, they isn't here, or? It's the Rosenweg, it's the Rosenweg, yeah, they're here. Okay, there is a Beckerweg. And I love how everybody's basically built a wall around their little garden. This is the wall outside of the garden, but they've still managed to cordon off the area outside of the garden and the fence. Love it. We came the wrong direction, but this side was beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> nice beautiful. to meet you. Hi. I'm Kavita. Yeah, I'm Tam. Komm Sie rein. Komm Sie rein. Wow. Und da haben Sie denn hier Äpfel, hier vorne Pflaumen von allen etwas. Tomaten. And the tomatoes, that's crazy. <laughs> it's like we're in the middle of the Mediterranean. How long have you had this garden? 25 years. Wow. How many people have houses in this area? 2,500. 2,500? Yeah. That's huge. 26 colonies. Kleingartenkolonie is ja so, that you here natürlich gewisse Pflichten hast. Oh. Die Hecken da, die dürfen nicht höher sein als 120. Haus dürfen nicht größer sein als 24 Quadratmeter. Uh -huh. Das sind so Kleingarten gesetzt. Ein Kleingarten gehört immer zu Berlin. Das ist die Lunge von Berlin, die Natur. Das ist das Maß eben. Ne? Ja? Weil, wenn, was du guckst, das lebt. Uncle Tom's in the kitchen, preparing a few snacks for us. Nehmen wir noch Jürgen auf. Die muss ich mit dem Finger rausnehmen, ist egal. So, dann werde ich das mal rausbringen. <lacht> What is this? Das ist Gehacktes mit Zwiebeln, Pfeffer und Salz. Weiter nicht. Gehacktes, ähm Gehacktes mit, mit Schweinefleisch. Okay. Is this something you used to eat when you were young? Is this, is this traditional? All time. Yeah? I eat that all the time. You eat it all the time? Ja. Yeah. Is it your favorite? In the morning, in the evening. <laughs> when you sit in an hound, special, you talk, then is that good. No, then prost. <laughs> oh. 
I don't know where to start. Wenn es zu nüchtern ist, kannst du noch ein bisschen nach. Wenn es nicht salzig ist, ist Wow. It's actually not that bad. Make good, right? With a pickle. Yeah. I eat everything. Yeah. I eat all of the, you know, the inner rein, like mm. the stomach. No. I can eat that. I eat keine Leber. Ich esse kein Hering. Oh no. Das sind zwei Sachen, die ich nie esse. But this, you eat this. Yeah, that, yeah. I think you have to have a little bit of onion with it. Onions. The onions are important. Onions even... müssen auf. Yeah. Die kannst du gleich in den Fleisch mit reinkneten. From raw meat to boiled meatballs, one of the most famous local dishes and a personal favourite of mine is Königsberger Klopse, an old Prussian speciality that was deemed very luxurious back in the day. It has an unusual mix of ingredients which initially sounds a little peculiar, so to find out more about this delicious dish, I'm going to Morelschen, a cosy old place that takes you back in time to a forgotten era of Berlin. Anliegen war es, die deutsche Küche aus dem früheren Ostdeutschland in Erinnerung zu halten. Und dazu gehören natürlich auch die Königsberger Klopse. Und das ist von Anfang an angenommen worden. The meatballs are made by mincemeat of beef. Then you have um, onions in it, anchovies, salt and pepper, of course. Anchovies. Anchovies gives it the special flavor, right? And a little bit of eggs, I think. Oh. And uh, in the sauce, it's made by the bros of the uh, meatballs. You have, in the end, you have some capers in it. And a little bit of lemon to make it a little bit sour. Oh. Madam, the meatballs. Wow. I must apologize. Maybe the portion could be a little bit too small. It's definitely too small a for me. Bit more, let it be known. <laughs> I hope you're very I'm really it. excited about eating yeah? it. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy your meal. Thank you. I'm a huge fan of comfort food, and this is just good yeah, comfort food, but with a little twist. Like, you would never have anchovies and capers in comfort food. Why is capers and anchovies a dish that represents Berlin? I don't know. Berlin is weird, but it's super tasty. Also, this is a clara corn, der mit einer Scheibe Hausmacher Leberwurst serviert wird und einem Klacks Mostrich obendrauf, Senf. In Ostpreußen sagte man Mostrich, wie in Berlin auch. Man nimmt das Glas zum Mund, nimmt die ganze Scheibe Wurst, dann lässt man die Wurst auf der Zunge zergehen, schmeckt und genießt die Wurst und dann mit dem Schnaps darüber. Und nur mit dem Schnaps. Der Schluck war gut. Wunderbar. <lacht> Yummy. Ja, ja, das ist gar nicht so einfach. Ja, gut. Super. Ja, Besser als ich. Perfekt. Ja, tough lady. <lacht> that was very um, interesting. It wasn't so bad. No, no, it isn't bad. It's not bad. Unusual. It it's is. just very unusual. Yeah. <laughs> Berlin is surrounded by 3,000 lakes, so naturally fish is quite important in Berlin's cuisine. In particular, Berliners love their pickled and smoked fish. I'm going to Rogaki, the city's oldest fischraucherei, to find out a bit more about these traditional techniques. 
So we're about to head into Rogaki, which is basically um, a fish smokery. I think it's the oldest one in Berlin. It's been around since 1928. And it's kind of like developed into like a food court, specializing in fish. The Laden is ziemlich bekannt in Berlin, also it kennt fast jeder. And man can auch lebend fish here kaufen, das geht auch. Man sagt also, den Fisch hätte ich gerne zum Essen. <laughs> Sorry, because that's where all the fish is. Here you see the special sausage cabinet. It smells like smoked and a little less like fish. Most of this fish is being smoked or will be smoked in the Rauchrei at the back there. Is Wow, that's crazy. What is that type of fish? This is Heilbutt. How do you get the best quality smoked fish? The old Öfen, from the Bauart her, they are the optimal to the The new Öfen, they are with electro or with gas, but the old Öfen are with real wood and with real wood fired. Und der Fisch bekommt hier auch das Aroma von dem Holz. So haben die schon vor 200 Jahren ge geräuchert und das ist eigentlich noch eine traditionelle Sache. Traditionell sind zum Beispiel die Aale, der Räucheraal. Ja, also der wird in Berlin speziell oder in Brandenburg auch speziell schon lange geräuchert. Und so wie wir das hier machen, ne, also im, direkt im, im Laden drin, sind wir glaube ich die Einzigen. Okay. Ja. Eating stuff. Can I join you? Is yes, that allowed? Yeah? yeah. But why did you come to Rogaki today? <laughs> it's a very nice. Yeah. Nice, nice to stay here, and also as so feeling the smell from the food. What to stay here? It's so nice. In the night we dream from this. Really? Yeah, to stay here, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's taste some of this fish, the smoked fish. Oh. But eel is very difficult to cut, isn't it? Because the skin is a bit like leather. Mm. Yes. All right. Here. Okay, you do it for me. On yes. the side, on the right, on the and left here. side. Mm. Ah. You, 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 now you get the... Uh, oh, the jelly. Yes. That's the good now. part, right? You, this one, maybe you cannot eat it. Yeah. It is very hard. So hard. But it's yes. good for you, right? Yes, ah, it's, it's a very oh. nice. <laughs> very smoky, yes. very fatty. It's delicious. It's very good. It would be a crime to leave Berlin without eating a whole lot of currywurst. Shortly after World War II, a new technique arose that made it possible to create a sausage without the intestine around it. It was called Spandauer on a Pella. Herder Heuver took this unsalted, unsmoked sausage and served it with a special sauce made of tomato paste and many spices. She called it Special Cory Bratwurst, and it took Berlin by storm. This little imbus behind me serves the best currywurst in Berlin. You might have heard of Curry 36, you might have heard of Knopkes, but it's Krasseltz in Steglitz that is going to serve us the delight that is a currywurst. I would like to try one of your currywurst. Probieren. Mit Darm oder ohne Darm? Ohne Darm, das ist bei uns Tradition. Okay. Oh, what's that? Alte Öl aus meinem Auto. <lacht> Was wichtig ist, dass die Konsistenz gut ist und der gut gemachte Ketchup, der vom Chef selber gemacht wird. Oh, das und der ist der Chef? Gut. Nein. Nein. Denkst du, der Chef würde hier mit drin stehen arbeiten? <lacht> Hast du das jetzt hier wieder drauf? Scheiß, mach ja nicht mehr. Gib ja nicht weiter. <lacht> I have to say, it's not very traditional to see it on a stick. It's like a sausage lollipop. But as she said, that's how she does it. So I'm going to eat it that way too. I have a feeling that the oil from her car is actually Worcester sauce. The sausage is very juicy. The ketchup doesn't really taste like industrial ketchup. Tastes good. Very sweet. What does the currywurst mean for Berlin? 
Ich denke, die Kurve steht für Berliner Menschen an erster Stelle. Ohne geht's nicht. Wenn die mal in Urlaub fahren, sind 14 Tage weg von uns, dann kommen die zurück und kommen noch vom Flughafen hierher und essen Currywurst bei Krasse. The old school Berliners I've met along the way seem to have a unique sense of humour and enjoy using it to present their culture and culinary pride. They might not seem that approachable on the first instance and they certainly don't waste time with fake pleasantries, but they definitely have big hearts and are open to getting to know you. It was a real eye-opener for me. Meeting these characters and getting a little insight into their world prove that it's very much their quirkiness and openness that are embedded in Berlin's personality. On the next episode, we're going to take a tour of the original street food places that have shaped Berlin's casual dining scene. 